two paintings um, are in two different places. Uh, they both need tweaking, in my opinion. They both need tweaking, but for different reasons. This one needs tweaking because I'm not happy with it, and I need to try to figure out why I'm not happy with it. This one, on the other hand, needs tweaking. Um, even though I am happy with it. I'm happy with it, it's just not finished. So two different problems and um, two uh, uh, processes to fix it. Okay, now let's talk to, talk to my computer, which is right here. Let's zero in on my computer screen. There we go. So let's start with this painting right here. And yes, I'm going to do some playing around in Photoshop before I do anything. Uh, now let's talk about, and again, if you want Photoshop, um, you can get Photoshop Elements, which is a very good program. It's not as, uh, as full of features as, of course, the real Photoshop, but I mean, last time I checked, it was, a, I used it for a while, and it was on a PC, and it was a very good program. The other thing you can do, I don't know if you know this, you used to have to pay five, six, seven hundred dollars for a Photoshop. Now you can't buy it that way. You pay by the month. And I actually like it much better. So I paid uh, Apple 20 or $22 a month or something like that to use Photoshop. And I'm actually quite a bit happier that way. than, And it, it keeps getting updated to get all the latest, greatest bells and whistles and so on. OK, let's talk about this painting for just a minute. What's wrong with it? The answer is, I don't know. If I knew exactly what was wrong with it, um, I would fix it. But I don't. Um, I want to bring up my brush tool. I have several uh, suspicions, however, about what's wrong with it. The, the main suspicion is the values aren't right. The composition is not right. So let me talk about this for just a minute and again go back to the, where, where the screen fills up. OK. Um, it is a lovely painting of a snow scene, right? And I kind of, I like the, the sort of X shape down here in the foreground, which is where the painting started. I don't think that's a problem. Let's think, if you will think with me for just a minute about Mikey's rule, it's what I call Mikey's rule because I got it from my friend Mike Rooney, about values. Well, no, let's go with Dan's <laughs> Danny's rule, which is, the light and dark, dark areas. Let's talk about rules of composition, okay? First of all, law of thirds, no problem. But uh, the second rule is the major, not minor, the major light and dark areas should be describable in essentially one word. And there's, I believe, where the problem is. We've got, let's count, let's look at the light areas. One, two, three, and I'm going to say four. One, two, three. These maybe are connected. Maybe we can consider that one light area if we stretch it. That that's, goes through quite, quite a bit of darkness there. So there's a light area, there's and there's there. Okay, the light area is not contiguous, cannot be described with a single word <coughs> other than hodgepodge. Let's look at the dark areas. Here we have a, <coughs> a dark X. That's good. In fact, I suspect the bottom half of this painting might be a good composition. <laughs> and it is. The problem is we have dark up here. So we have, if we call all of this a dark area and this, it's hard to see how the, that forms one shape. Okay, are you, are you with me? So now let's go to Mikey's rule. He says light, medium, and dark. Three tones, three values. And all of the, two of the three, either, either light and mid, or mid and dark, or light and dark. Two of the three values need to be contiguous, that is, touching each other. Only one of the values can be higgledy-piggledy, freckle face, random. Okay, so in this one, this is all medium, and this is all medium. Uh, we have, and is it touching? Uh, barely. I guess you can call this a medium area, so this is all medium. It's touching, but then We've got another, do you see a, a, a light band that cuts through? Maybe we can call 
this and this all medium, in which case all the medium values are contiguous. Do you know that word? You, every, all Americans know that word because we hear it all the time when, with ref, reference to the, contigu, the touching United States, not counting Alaska and Hawaii, contiguous. So mids are okay. Darks, well, where are the darks? Oh, there's little bits there. That's not, big, that's not big enough to be an area. That's not big enough to be an area. This is the only dark area is up here, and it's, we, can we call all that one? No, this is not one united dark area. Are you with me so far? So the mids are contiguous, the darks are not, and are the lights? Absolutely not. We have light, separate light, separate light, separate light. So according to Mikey's rule, this is a bad composition, and I do think that that is, that is getting close to the problem with this painting. It's a composition issue, and we're breaking Mikey's rules. Now, let me, um, again, I need to come out of the screen just for a minute and select a color. By the way, I am using a Wacom tablet. Um, Oh, let me show you what a Wacom tablet looks like. Uh, there you go, right there. Okay, it's this thing right here, and this little pen. So, and the right word is Wacom because I, <laughs> because I'm quite sure because I listened to the guy from the factory uh, describe how to use it, and he, the the man who works at the Wacom factory, said Wacom. So there you go. Um, okay, so what would happen if? I took some, whoops, sorry, I need to get out of here again real quick, sorry. I'm trying to get a soft brush. I'm darkening this corner. What would happen if we darken this corner, eliminate that white area, light it, and make that a mid-tone? And then, um, what if we made, I'm up in the upper, my brush is up in the upper left-hand corner now. I'm dark. I'm going to darken this area. I've got a, a brownish. The color, I've got this color right here on my brush right now, but it's set at about 10%. Uh, so every time I go over, you can see my. Here's every time I go over, it gets just a little bit darker. So what I'm wondering about here is I wonder if all this light down here, even though I liked it and it was, it was that initial splash and I don't like to obliterate those initial splashes, but what would happen, I'm just darkening all of this area down here and you know what, before my very eyes, what do you think? Before my very eyes, the painting is getting better. I don't think I'm done yet. Doggone it, I'm surprised. Now I darkened the two corners, a classical, if you will, classical vignette technique, darkening the corners, and darken this whole area down here. I, I'm sitting here a little bit uh, stupefied. Now let me let me try something else just for a minute. Let's do some let's do some light stuff. So I, again, I need to get out of this big out of this screen. I don't know if you got. I, I, I'm thinking it looks better the other way when I have black in the background, but maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, now I want to uh, go to my brush tool, brush, and I want uh, uh, color dodge, take this way down to like 7%, and I've got light, okay. So now I'm going to make some parts of the painting whiter. Little by little. I don't know if you can see that. And this would be a little bit tricky to do this on the painting, but it certainly it can be done, just a little bit tricky. Darkening a painting, by the way, is is easy. Darkening a painting is a piece of cake because you do it with transparent glazes. Um, almost done. Now again, so what if you guys don't have Photoshop? Uh, I'm going to tell you that, well, let me tell you that right now. Let me tell you. If you don't have Photoshop, 
here's one thing you can do. Take a picture of your painting, send it to your computer, tweak it, uh, well, you know, edit in your phone or edit in your computer, either one, and then you print out, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that everybody knows what a color printer is, right? And by the way, I don't know when's the last time, I, I haven't bought one recently, I think this is maybe three years old or so, uh, but the last time I bought a color computer, um, I signed up for a program where my printer talks to Hewlett Packard and tells them when I'm running out of ink and they mail it to me automatically. Now I'm sure that I'm paying a fair premium for that service, but it beats the heck out of running out of ink in the middle of a job. Are you with me? So I love the system. Okay, so you print it brrr, on your printer and here's what I have right here in my hand. I have two copies and this one was my first one. I went, ooh, that's too, uh, too, um, that's what I'm looking for, aqua, too phthalo up here. So I tweaked it and came up with that one. I said, ooh, yeah, that's better. And then I printed it out. Here's another trick. I printed it out actually on canvas. This one came out first and it's like, whoa, that's too hot. So I tweaked it and there we go. So I, I now have four copies, two on paper and two on canvas. Now, let me show you just real quick. Here's the the canvas print Frederick's archival print canvas eight and a half by eleven I'm assuming I know you can get this over the internet anywhere but that's what it is and you can print on a regular inkjet printer so why would you want to do that well because in a minute we're gonna paint on these things and we're gonna find it's a lot easier to paint on canvas than it is on paper Okay, so for those of you who don't want to do all this stuff I was just doing in Photoshop, even though, do you see it helped a whole lot just to see that? Um, you don't have to have Photoshop. What you can do is just print it out on paper. That's good enough. But if you want to get really fancy, print it out on this canvas stuff that's even more fancy. Now, can I do this? Before we go, let's, let's look at another painting, okay, which is this uh, painting of, blow that up a little bit, <clears throat> painting of the White House in winter. So again, it's this painting right up here behind me. Okay, there's the original, looking kind of washed out in that picture. And here is, uh, are we having sound problems again, people? Heather can hear me. <laughs> um, Um, sorry, I'm trying to get things. Hey, Joe, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for the comment. Um, so here's my painting, and unlike the farm one where I wasn't happy, I am, again, let me show you the original. I am quite happy with this painting, but I think I can do better. And I'm going to, I'm going to again, I did the same thing. I printed out, uh, in this case, just one copy on paper, and two copies on canvas, partly because I was trying to get, that was a, I don't like that color, but I can use all of these, and we'll do that in just a minute, okay? Um, what I wonder about this painting is uh, a couple things. One, and I won't, that won't do this in Photoshop, it needs more energy as the word, a little, little more detail, a little more finish uh, out here. I'm, I was working really hard to keep the focus here, and I've done that, in fact, I've overdone it, so now this out here looks unfinished. I'll fix that on the painting in a little bit. But the real thing I'm wondering about on this painting is about the this area right here. Should this white light, white snow, come down here further in the painting? And that's what I want to find out. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to uh, normal brush. I'm going to jack it up pretty high, up to about 70%, maybe. That'll be about right. Okay, 76%. Good enough. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to do some... Whoops, I've got the wrong color. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Okay, I want to lighten this and say, what would happen if I made this snow light stuff come down here further in the painting now I don't want I really don't want to obliterate all this because I like that that messy spontaneous drippy look so I don't want to obliterate that if I can help it 
but something about the painting makes me think it might work better if I brought this light down here. What do you guys think? What do you think? And then maybe lighten this bush a little bit. I, I'm mainly thinking of like taking this section here and going this way. Okay, let's watch this. Here's the nice thing about, about of course, computer and Photoshop. I can erase, I can undo, I think everything I just did. Whoops, no, I must have the settings on this Photoshop. I can only undo so much. Well, let's do this then. We go all the way here. We go back to open. Yeah. I don't want to go that far. So that's what it looked like when I first opened it. And that's where I am at now. Um, okay, enough of the computer. It's, I, I like it okay enough to start experimenting. Now, let's change gears considerably. I'm going to um, let you watch me shift around. Enough of the computer. Enough of the computer playing. Let's do some real hands-on, which of course is exactly what we artists love to do. We are artists after all, and we love making stuff with our hands, don't we? That's a bit of a dig at the, a little bit of a dig at the um, computer art people, but only a little bit. I mean, sure, it's still art, but yeah, it's not the same as physical, is it? Okay, um, so let me set this aside for a moment. Let's focus on the farm scene for a minute. And I want to do on paper what I did on computer a little while ago and see if I'm in the right ballpark. By the way, here are the photographs that I did these paintings from. So you can see how much liberty I took. Right? A lot of liberty here in the foreground. I'm going to set that aside. Actually, I'll set it up here so I can still look at it if I want to while I'm doing it. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Talk about a switch. I don't think you guys have ever even seen. No, you. Have, I don't think you've ever even seen my pastel uh, kit. It's a, it's a big fishing tackle box. Doesn't sit on this chair very well, so I hope it doesn't collapse while we're working. But there's my pastels. Some of them. I have others elsewhere. But that's good enough for now. Now let, let's zero in on... And come on, I'm hoping that that's going to, there we go, adjust. So here's what I want to do. What I just did on Photoshop, I want to replicate that to some degree here on paper. So um, I'm going to take... Pastel, just really quickly. I don't know detail here at all. I just want to see the values. Let's do that and let's take a, um, a neutral gray. Where here we go. Let's take a neutral gray and vignette these corners. So I'm driving all you pastel people crazy right now with this sloppy technique, right? I mean, working on this hard surface underneath on copy paper. Of all things. So it's far from ideal. But it's just enough. And then one more thing. Now, what if I take white? And, and, and again, trying to replicate sort of what I just did on the computer. Lighten all this area just a little bit. Okay, the question is, here, hang on, before I, before I proceed. This area is too, getting too much attention because it's too bright down here. So I'm just going to gray that in a little bit. Now, I want to see this. I, I already did it on the computer, and that gave me some insight. But I want to see it on, on a hard copy. Yep, it's still better. It's better than... Here's the painting. Here's the painting that's suffering. It's suffering a little bit because of composition for some reason. The composition just is not hanging together very well. Let me see if I can get the, do you see? So now I'm thinking if I darken all this and lighten some up here, it'll be a better painting. I'm encouraged. You can believe it or not, I'm, I am literally surprised. Uh, I was surprised on the computer a little while ago how much difference it made when I darkened this area. Now let me, can I play with this just a little bit more? I want to, um, 
want to darken this foreground even a little bit more before I move on to the other the other painting. Okay. Let me give you uh, Mikey's rules again while I'm doing this because I, I've talked about it a lot in month, in recent months, but I haven't talked about it in recent weeks. And some of you are new to me, so here we go. Again, I call it Mikey's rule simply because I'm I'm sure Mike. I asked Mike, where did you get it from? And he said, I don't know. It's, uh, my friend Mike Rooney. We're good buddies. He's a good artist. Look him up, Mike Rooney. Uh, we paint together every year for a week at Ocracoke Island, and uh, have done that for five years in a row and, and having a lot of fun. Okay, so Mikey's rule is three values, light, medium, and dark. And two of those three need to be touching each other to form a unit, to form a unified shape. The, either the light and the medium, or the medium and dark, or the light and the dark. Two of the three need to be contiguous. The third one can be higgledy-piggledy, can be freckle-faced, can be scattered. Okay? This painting, as it was, did not satisfy that rule. Because the mid-tone was connected, but the dark areas and the light areas were both scattered. Now, when I do this, I've got basically <laughs> one mid-tone. It's a, it's a very simple composition. Or to use my rule, which is slightly different, is you should be able to name the major light. I only do two values, light and dark. Major light and dark areas with a single word. Now I do it. I've done it. The, my dark area is a donut. The light area is a hole in the donut. <laughs> to use uh, Edgar Payne's uh, terminology, this is a a single mass, a mass, or a uh, radiating. You know, this could be this could be viewed as a radiating shape. The, ra the it's the white that is radiating. See so if I bring this down like that a little bit, and that. Do you see that? That that's um, that's uh, Edgar Payne which, again, those are my, my four rules for composition. My four name, my four categories of composition are, number one, the law of thirds. Number two, Dan's light and dark shapes. Number three, uh, Mikey's rule, three tones. Number four, Edgar Payne. And uh, all of that will be in my book, The Breakable Laws of Painting, and you can find it online. I'll try to remember to post that some of that uh, a little bit later. Okay, let's leave that aside now. Let me tell you the last thing I'm going to do with this, with this is I'm going to do, and we'll be doing this in a few minutes, I'm going to do oil paint on this canvas. Okay, that will really help me figure out what, exactly what I want to do with the, um, when I go to the real painting. Uh-oh, picking up static. Wow, you guys. This dismays me, not in, not slightly. Um, okay, I hate to do this, but we're going to switch to uh, the Mevo microphone. I'm going to plug this in. Okay, I'm assuming you can hear me. Yeah, Benji, thank you for letting me know that. Okay, here's my three. I only made three copies. Let's do the first one in paper. And the made the I basically have one question with this painting, and it is: Would this painting be strengthened if I continued this light area down like this? And I've already decided that from the computer messing around that. Yes, I think it would be improved. Um, so, that's all. I'm going to try that. Now, are you with me? You want to stick with me for just a few more minutes? Here we go. Let's switch again. Let me move you again. Hang on for the ride. Let me move you again back over to my easel. I know I'm giving... This is awful to shake you all over the place like this. Hang on, <laughs> there's a picture of my floor. Let's do this painting first. Um, and it is... It hey. is, hello. Are you doing a lot? Yes. Okay, let me know. Okay. 
Give me just a minute while I, um, whoops, <laughs> can I get you pointed in the right direction? Hang on, I know this is pretty bad, pretty bad um, broadcasting, isn't it? Sorry about that, especially with the sound problem. Very bad. There we go. This is my the last thing, the last experiment I'm going to do before I go to the real painting, and I won't mess, I won't show you me messing with the real painting. I just wanna want you to see me doing um, experimenting, and then then we'll do another broadcast in a little while where I tweak the actual painting. Okay, Whew. that was some bad energy. Yes, that was me, Heather. That was me. Okay, now here's the the most fun part. Is this is a little canvas print of my painting, and the question is, will the painting be improved now? Because and I have a hunch that it will. Because I've done this twice now. I did it on my computer, and then I did it on a hard copy with pastels. And I'm thinking that the, the, simply by darkening, and, I, and again, right now I'm using transparent paint. That is lots of media, and, and people are, don't be confused, I don't mean I went out to the store and bought a can of that transparent paint. No, 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 no. What I mean is I put enough liquid medium in it fast dry medium right here to make it transparent that's what makes it transparent not that I bought transparent paint but I will do the same thing when I um, do the real painting because I don't want to lose all this lovely interesting detail and texture down here I do not want to lose that so I will certainly do the same I will certainly when I paint the real painting I will do it I will when I go to the real painting I will also be using transparent color making a painting dark is so easy you do it with transparent glazes boy I hope I actually hope I don't need to say that I hope you've watched me enough that you understand that or you've watched somebody Somebody has set you on the road. Um, I, 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 I don't want to rag on my dear, dear, dear friends that belong to my painters group. But uh, I can't tell you how many times over the years, over the 10 years that we've been meeting, somebody will put up a painting and they're humming and hawing and scratching their chin and trying to figure out what's wrong. Uh, let me give you my... Uh, what's the word? 80% um, of the time... When the painting isn't working. If the drawing is okay, are you with me? Drawing, perspective, drawing's okay, but there's something just not working with the painting like this one. 80% of the time, it's a values problem. Bingo. And, hang on, I'm not done yet. 80% of those times, when it's a values problem, it's a lack of dark values problem. In other words, it's not enough darks. 80% of the time. Now, that's not 100 in either case. But it's a pretty darn high percentage, and it's exactly, exactly what was wrong with this painting. Um, now it's hanging together. Now the composition is okay. There was just one more thing I was going to play around with, and that is to unify the the light part of this painting a little bit. Maybe so. Right now I've got white paint on my brushes. On my brush, I say brushes all the time because I'm usually painting with two hands at the same time. And I just want to make the light area a little more contiguous, touching. So it's not 
so scattered. I want to make the light area a little bit more of a unit, a little bit more of a cohesive unit. Now, I'm not sure I can do that. I can. I'm not sure I can do it easily, but I'm gonna, I want to see it anyway. And see if the painting gets better. See, and by the way, the light going up into the sky here, in my opinion, is quite important. That little bit of angel singing stuff happening up there. Wow. Now, I don't know about you. Now, I, I wonder how much can I cheat? Can I bring a little bit of light down here? I think I might be able to, as long as I stay within the mid-tone range. I think I might be able to do that. Okay, this makes me happy, because now I'm thinking, are you with me? Here's, here's what my painting was a, just a few minutes ago, and I was not happy with it. Hang on just a second. I was not happy with it, and I wasn't sure why. And now, so I've done it three times, once in Photoshop, once with pastel on paper, and once with paint on canvas. And I already, I see this painting right here, just beats the heck out of this one. And that makes me really happy, because of course this is the real painting, and I want it to be good. Now I think I know what to do to make it good. Woohoo! Boy, that's a good day's work right there. I mean, just, just, just accomplishing that much. Now, let's go, let's do the other painting. Are you with me? Let's do one more. The White House in Snow painting. A painting which, here, I'll show it to you again. Hang on. Here is the finished painting, and I like it quite well. I think that's a pretty nice painting, but I, I question whether it's as good as it can be. And the question is, if we, it's just, uh, first of all, I'm going to do a little bit more detail, and I, the, my favorite word is energy, a little more finish here, 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 and maybe here. I was working really hard to keep the focus here, and I've done that almost too much. Now, I like this, but it's like there's not quite enough happening over here for our eye to enjoy the journey. The other thing is, I think it might have a better composition if I drag this light down to here. So before I do it and take real risks on my real painting, I'm going to, once again, I'm going to practice on my uh, little canvas print here. I hope that makes sense to you. So you don't... You don't have to have Photoshop, of course. You can do all of this paper and canvas stuff, at least the paper stuff. And of course, you could paint on paper as well. It just, as you know, <laughs> paper doesn't handle uh, oil paint really well. You could try with acrylic, sure. The problem with acrylic is you can't wipe it off. You know, once it's dry, it, uh, you can just paint more on top of it. Okay, so let's do some pure titanium white and the, the question is, if I extend, as if the sun was hitting all of this sunlight, all of this snow down here, as if the sun was coming down, as if this area is not in shade, but came down something like that. That is the question. Does that make it a better painting? I'm standing back and squinting now, and I'm going, eh, I don't know. Um... Let me take my glasses off so I don't have to squint so much. Um, I don't like the taper. I don't like it coming down like that. I don't think so. I don't think I want to go off the page because I think I want this to be a, a contiguous... I keep using that word today a lot. I hope you like it. I want that to be a contiguous shape. Not continuous, no. Contiguous is the word. Connecting, all connected. Okay, tell you what. I'm, I'm not positive about this. I'm going to take it very slowly when I, when I start working on the real thing. Now here I can experiment a little bit. What happens if I just fade that out instead of having it... Ooh! Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, that was the problem. The hard edge there was... So I do like it coming down further, but I don't like the hard edge. So as soon as I wiped that off, it got better. Yahoo! And then same thing. I think if I soften that line right there, it'll be better. 
Okay, let me try one more thing. I'm wondering now if I bring more light up to this side of that tree. And some white up here. So that there's going to be, as I said, more finish up, more energy up there anyway. Now I'm playing around. What happens if I push that this these bushes, these trees back a little bit? Do you see how easy it, it risk-free this is? I can do anything I want to this little cheap canvas because it's not it's going in the trash in just a minute, right? I'm not sure about that. Maybe. Maybe that's okay. Again, what about some light back here? Okay, tell you what, while we're filling, why not, why not throw caution to the wind? What would happen if this whole corner was, was went white, went light, and then I just have a shadow of this tree coming? I, of course, the tree's got to have a shadow, but I, I think this shaft, this line is important too. Okay, what do you guys think? Is that better? Mm. Nope. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as the expression goes. So I'm glad I tried that. Now, it might work if I just make it slightly lighter, like that. Nah. Nah, I don't think so. I think I'll leave that corner pretty much the same. I didn't like the way what that did to it. Anyway, I hope that helps. Isn't that fun? That you can do... Um, you can do so much experimentation. You need a camera. I'm assuming you've got one. I'm assuming you've got a smartphone. If I, if you can, print. If some of you can print straight from your camera to your printer. Um, if you don't have a printer, go to your local op supply store and they'll print pictures for you. And uh, you can print it on paper and mess around with pastel. You can print it on canvas and more easily mess around with paint. But I made good progress on one painting, slight progress on the other. But I already like this painting pretty well, so it didn't need a whole lot of help. Hope that's fun. Hope that's helpful. Sorry about all the quality problems today. But uh, I'll be back again later today doing another broadcast on a different subject. Thanks.